a very good afternoon to one and all and shubhra ma'am let's start with a brief description about her uh, dr shubhra sanya she is currently working as a counselor at ohbi seva kuti new delhi and was a former senior reader at national institute of criminology and forensic science mha new delhi she has undergone training on direct training skill and designing of training by ismt and addictive behavior among adolescent drug users and women empowerment she started her career as a lecturer in isabella thoban college lucknow and she has also worked as a lecturer in psychology in jail officers training school lucknow she was the senior faculty member as the at the national institute of criminology and forensic science she has worked as a deputy director at the national institute of social defense and head of the drug bureau and as a deputy director for behavioral training in the institute of secretariat training and management after her retirement she is actively busy in many research works like national research on rehabilitation of released prisoners in india for which she is awarded the jawaharlal nehru memorial fellowship she is the author of many books including save your children written for the ncert and communication and counseling in the workplace she has be, been part of many national and international seminars and conferences and went abroad to attend various training courses she has been honored with many awards like the sushil chandra award by the all india association of criminology for her work in training and research the words are not enough to define a work done by you in this field so <laughs> thank you so much ma'am for being here with us and over to you kritika ma'am thank you i just hope everybody is uh, my sound is audible and uh, i'm reaching out to all well uh, i'm very happy to uh, you know being invited by you all on this platform and i also you know show my gratitude to those people who have listened to me because today is raksha bandhan day and many of people are now at home you know they are trying to celebrate raksha bandhan sparing some time for me because today is the day at this moment i am also speaking on children so i think you know hopefully people will be there to listen to my feelings to my words because i sometimes speak with emotions on the rights of the children and all that i have learned through my experiences and my counseling while sitting in observation home for boys for 10 to 12 years thank you very much with these words i start my talk if you all ready shall i share i find a small picture of a boy with a violin that's very nice may i know who are you sir uh that's my son's picture <laughs> no, very nice thank you very much it's a very good welcome thank you shall we begin yes ma'am we are ready for your lecture okay now uh to begin with you know when we talk of children because here we are not concentrating on anything else and children and let me share with you something very personal it is this you know even at this age when i have reached this age sitting at home i get worked up i get worried i become anxious when i see children moving on the street with rag bags on their shoulders with coming to beg for food coming as rag pickers garbage pickers i often wonder are these the children of our country are they progressing to the right end how can a country develop where at least let's say 50% yeah children are there who are in the poverty homes or who are in shelter homes or who are in the observation homes who require our protection our recognition our love and regards because these children are the future generations of our country this works in me and i think you know dr ranjit singh when he gave me a chance to speak on this platform i felt that let me share my thoughts as to what i have been doing so far and what i hope that after hearing me you people can carry over if you all are parents please listen to me intently if you are students and boys and girls then also listen 
to what I feel about small change. Now here, you know, I'm basing my whole, uh, I won't say lecture, my thoughts and my deliberations on four dimensions. This is a paper, it was submitted by my research scholar, Divya Dubey, and you know, it has worked so well that even now when I'm doing a, a research, I'm going to publish a book, these very findings are coming in the way. And this starts with four Ds. I've added one, she said three, but there are four. Children in the beginning, right in the beginning, below the age of 14, let's say, between 10 and 14, they are very decent. I'm talking of normal homes. I'm talking of an average home. That they are very decent. They follow the norms. They listen to their parents. They abide by the code of conduct. And they show decency. Parents are happy. Because parents are saying, which the parents do not realize many a times, too many don'ts and very little do's. And when the don'ts are being followed scrupulously by the children, parents don't go back to say, thank you, you have done it, what I have said. They think it is expected from the children. Anyway, this is the stage. And later, I'll come to the later, I'll stick to this page where the children are decent. Now I go back. I go back to say, friends, that India has given right to the child. The constitution of India, just like gives right to every individual has given right to the child. Right to liberty, right to freedom of expression, right to ed education, right to good health, right to nutrition, everything. But as long as the child is small and living in the house with his parents, how many rights are being followed? How many rights are being nurtured by the parents? Parents believe that if we good, I'm talking about adequately handsome salaried parents, the upper middle class or the middle class families. They believe that giving the child some pocket money or taking them out to some parties or giving them some candies, the children's needs are fulfilled. No, we have to correct our thoughts in these days. This is bygone. In the past, children's means were limited. Children had very subdued views. They felt whatever parents gave, that is good. That's it's a blessing. But today, if you go on thinking in this manner, it is erroneous. It is wrong. And that is why we are having so many behavior disorder in the children. We are finding children running away. We are child finding children moving in deviancy. That I'll come up towards. But the beginning part, let's handle it carefully. Let me share with you this. That while I was used to sit and interact with the juveniles in the correctional homes and even with other normal children, I still always think to myself as a mother, a woman, as a psychologist, that these children are not born criminals. These children have not come from the parents who have who were criminals or habitual criminals. These children are from normal homes. And any a child, whether he is born in a poor family. Whether he is born in a very rich family, you know, you have a spectacular spectrum in our country, very poor and very rich, with a large majority falling in the middle class groups, upper middle class, lower middle class, and middle middle class. But then all children, all children everywhere, in every region, every world, they have a normal birth. No child starts saying, give me this, give me that, give me that. And no child shows exhibition of aggression frustration, depression, these are not there. And I somewhere studied regarding conflict, and I would like to share with you that when we say conflict, what is conflict? Conflict is a, uh, you know, there are two desires, very strong desires. And then one starts thinking which desire to choose. That is a dilemma. In other words, exactly in the same manner, when a child is born, you people recall what I say, I'm going to that stage, not of Sigmund Freud's, but of the infantile stage when the child is born. Then what happens? The child cries. If, it doesn't, if the child doesn't cry, the nurse makes the child cry in the hospital. Well, the child cries. That's a natural phenomenon. And we psychologists, you know, I found very interesting when three interpretations were given to this crying to understand conflict. 
while the doctor said the child must cry because the biological setup says the child's health exhibits that he's all right, so he cries. Right. Then comes the environmentalist who says the child has to cry because he was so far nine months in the mother's womb, a dark chamber. Now he was brought out under a hundred light, uh, uh, this thing, hundred bulb light. So he will cry because there's a shock to the heart and he cries. But you know what the psychologist says, and this is not my origin, this I read, and I found it very interesting. So I thought I'll share it. The psychologist said that child has to cry. Now the word I'm punning, the child has to cry. Why? Because he is in a dilemma to live or not to live. The birth pang, when he has come out, he cries. And therefore, the philosophers then further added to say, henceforth the child will cry. Because the conflict will go on increasing, increasing and increasing till he dies. There is no end to conflict. Because conflict is something which is man-created. Stress is something which is man-created. It is not that we are born with stress, we are born with conflict. Now here, this dilemma of to live or not to live begins with the child till he grows old or till he dies. Now here is something I shared with you. Now let me come to the stages as the child grows so that you'll understand where the behavior disorder occurs, where the parents as parents of children go wrong or where child himself goes wrong. But generally, Juvenile Justice Act do not blame, put blame on the child. They say all the blame go to the extra influences, parental supervision, peer group pressure, substance drugs, but not the child. So here I want to share with you now. Now you see, in psychology, there's another thing. We talk of conditioning. Conditioning is that any of behavior, even today some people retain, that the child sees and he finds that nobody is punishing him for it, or he finds that he is enjoying and getting pleasure, he starts getting conditioned to it. Now, in the infancy state, supposing sucking of the thumb, the child goes on sucking thumb because sucking thumb remembers in the proximity of his mother, mother's closeness, mother's body fragrance, mother's scent, mother's hand, mother's lap. When the mother is not there, the child starts the sucking thumb, taking that as a symptom of the mother. Now this thumb sucking, if it is not being corrected or not being rectified, or not being disapproved, the child will go on suck, uh, uh, thumb sucking. And that continues for a long period till he himself realizes this is not. So this is a conditioned behavior. Exactly in the same manner, as the child is growing up, he wants something, he's given, and repeatedly if he's asking for something like, say, chocolate, sugar, candy, or he's given, you know, he's asking for biscuit, anything, for example, and he's given whenever he's asked, he will start liking that. This, this is a positive behavior, no doubt, and the child, this is a part of cognition, to know, to know. You teach the child, this is this. This is the door, this is the uh, thing, uh, uh, window. This is your mother, this is your father. And he learns, this is, we all know, a very elementary talk I'm giving you. This is cognition. The child starts learning. But you must also remember one thing. During the process of teaching the child that this is this, this is your mother, this is your father, this you do and this you do not do, we must also remember the child is learning to know who he is, who he is, to whom he belongs, and what he should do in future. This self-concept is gradually and gradually merging and forming, which many a times we forget because we think the child is small. We can do anything in his presence. We can fight among ourselves. The child will not understand. This growth is so miraculous and so complex at the same time that the child is observing everything. And not only that, the intelligence growth is so rapid that he's registering everything in his brain, what is going on. 
So this is conceptualization of ideas form part of his personality and attitude. So whenever the father is scolding the mother or mother is fighting with the father, the child is become insecure in within him. His concept of who am I become is getting disturbed. And as a result, he starts feeling, am I safe here? Do I belong to these people? Where will I go? And he starts crying. Because he's so small, he's not able to express, I'm talking of a child below 5'4". He cries. He cries out of despair. He's not able to express. He cries out of despair. He cries out of fear because his survival is in danger. You know, I'm putting minutely everything for every parent to understand. The child has to receive a proper love and affection. Now, when we say, No, it happens everywhere. And more or less, it's happening more in the rich families. Because in the rich families or in the upper middle families, there are so many extracurricular activities coming in that children forgetting the rights of the child. Moreover, with career, I'm not saying that your career should not be there. Women, economic participation, women, emancipation are there, have to be there. But at the same time, the child who has come to earth, whom you have brought to earth, has to be recognized. His right, it has to be recognized. He has to be given that love. And especially he has to be given that sense of belongingness to whom you belong. Because sense of belongingness strengthens the security. Sense of belongingness and love makes him feel not to go wrong anyway. Now, as the child is growing, as long as he is small below adolescence, you are training him. You are correcting his behavior. There is a uh, lifestyle which says, you are not okay, I'm okay. And the child goes on accepting that because he's a small child. He will cry, you will scold him. You will love him, he will feel happy. He will be naughty, you will then again scold him. But then you know what happens, that this child gradually learns the do's and don'ts with the love he receives from the parents. But it's not, wait, we should not stop there. When the child is now reaching, now that is as per that paper that this research scholar that we have presented was decency. He was decent, but now we must realize that he's growing. The age, the age plays a prominent role in the development of personality, in the development of attitude, in the quantification of the needs of the child. You cannot simply give him a chocolate and say, Isko kao. You cannot give him a candy and say, Isko kao. You cannot say, this biscuit, nothing more, Isko kao. He says, no, I don't like it. I don't want it. Hame kuch aur do. Because now he is able to express. He can say, I like it. I don't like it. He can tell his father not by crying or his mother, I don't like it. Because the child is growing old. Now comes the next phase that is denial. Now the child is denying your right of authority. You have forgot you so far. You said, I'm your father. I'm your mother. I'm your elderly people. I'm your grandmother. You do what I say. He has done it. But now he says, here I am. Denial. Ab wo jo hai, deny karne lag jata hai. Ki nahi, hum nahi karenge. Aap kahenge, ye kapre laya hai tumhari liye dukaan se isko pehno. Wo kehta, mujhe nahi achha lagta hai. So, you know, of course, in a very poor family, when the parents make the child understand, you know, there are very good people who have come out from tribal wells, from poor families, from needy families. You know why? Because they are reared differently from those parents who believe ki paisa hi sab kuch hai. They are reared in a different way. And you know what is the main factor? The proximity, the love, the understanding these parents gave to their children. They show that whatever we have, we are giving to you. And the children realized that the, my parents care for me. All that they want. They want that love. They want that security. They want their mother's lap. They want the embrace of their father. 
And therefore, you'll find even in poor homes, children are going to school doing well. Substantially, they are coming out and they're today they are having white collar jobs. They are holding a very good course. And we say, wonderful, wonderful. We give credit to the children, but we must give to the parents who are always there. We feel proud of this. But what is happening? We do not have, you know, friends, records of so many children running away from upper middle class homes or taking to drugs or children from rich homes because they get conceived. All we see are children from poor homes in the correctional homes, children from very poor homes on the street. We are always having record of children, whether from WCD or from NCRB, children committing crime, all from poor homes. But I have noticed sitting in Kinsway camp that there are children from well-to-do homes who have committed crime and parents have taken care to take them away rather than getting corrected. So, you know, let me stop there and then move to the thing that denial. Denial phase is now entering. Now, parents who are listening to me or others who are listening to me, elders, must understand why the denial. But check your deny coming. When he is denying, and what is he denying? Communication, communication skill is a very, very good asset in us. If we can communicate to the child with love and understanding and say, Kyo kehreo, what exactly you want? Try to get into the mind of the child, what he wants. As long as he's not wanting something beyond the means, as long as he's not wanting something which is not right for him, as long as he's not wanting which is, should not be given to him, you can explain. Explanation with love will make the child of 14 plus realize that he's asking for something wrong. And he will correct himself. Why? Because he does not want to forgo the love of his parents. But when he doesn't love, he does love. They have never sat with him. They have always beaten him. They have shown the authoritative attitude. Then they'll say, why are you explaining? You know, there comes a conflict between the child and the parents. So the denial stage comes. Now then comes the deviancy. It is not delinquency, deviancy. Now when this starts, it starts from the age of 15, 16. Where the child, any thing that is being told to him, he says, no. You know, there is a clear sign of denial. There is a clear sign of deviating from the norms. Anything told, he will not use. I, I have read a case, you know, and I discussed this case also of a child who was told by his mother, do not go out because neighborhood also matters a lot, you know, where you're staying and what type of neighbors you have, what type of vicinity you have, what type of peer group you have. But the parents took control of the fact by controlling everything and saying, because they were doctors, high fi doctors. It is in model town. Long time back, the case occurred, but it struck me. And I would like to share with you. The boy was given, you know, a computer. He was given a mobile. He was given everything. And the parents said, when we are not there, the child used to study in model school. No, sorry, in DPS. He, they were in, staying in model town. And told that you come home. Food is there in the warmer. Now this, I'm giving a typical case of a modern family, the so-called modern family in our country. Take out the food and eat and get to do your studies or play on the computer. So the boy used to, you know, come back. He was a lone child. He used to come back, eat, eat, not eat, throw it in the wash basin, sit down with the studies or play on the computer. Now this boy you know, as I told you, right in the beginning, the intelligence is growing rapidly. So these are something which are very, very precarious. Very, very precarious. These cues that children, as they grow old, their intelligence is growing old, fast and they come to a platform at the age of 21. So parents must realize that whenever you are talking something in the presence of children, they are imitating immediately. And here what happened in this case, that the child started playing pornography on the computer. And he started sending these odd messages 
to his girlfriend in the class on the mobile. The girl got it. She showed to her mother. The mother showed it to the uh, this thing to the teachers, the principal, and the search started from where it's coming. Finally, the police could track, and they came to the house. The boy was at the same time. He he had returned home and had had his on lunch and was playing on computer. So. When the police people came in the house, he was just 10, uh, I think he was just 14 to 15. When they came, they were looking for some elderly people who could do some job and they were going about here and there and asking, who has done this? Who has done this? The boy was also wondering why these police people have come, said, what are you looking for, sir? They said, we are looking for a criminal. Yes. So there is no criminal. Where are your parents? We are in the dispensary. So while these people were strolling from one room to another room, they found on the computer this program going on. Now you see, friends, the wonders of wonders that this boy never knew that he was doing something wrong. Because when the parents used to come, he used to close down and show his work. And he was thinking to be this as an adventurous skill. So that, you know, he was, when he was sending out and people are wondering, he was enjoying the thrill the thrill and the sensation of this adventure without knowing that he was doing something wrong. So when the police people said, where is this person who has done this thing? He said, sir, uh, sir uncle, ye to mera kaam hai, main karta hun. And you know what? It came on record, the police people, because at that time I was in the home ministry and I was interacting with a lot of police officers, they said, we didn't know what to do in that situation. We were looking at the boy and looking at the computer. Then you know what happened. They went and explained it to the principal. Principal called the parents. And immediately what was expected started. The parents started accusing the boy. The parents started accusing the boy and they said, you have put us in shame, our careers are gone. Everything. The principal came, then they went and met the principal. Principal also said, Take the boy away. We are not going to keep because he'll spoil the environment. You know what came to the rescue? And even today, it got so much registered in me that I really feel happy for that boy. The parents' union came and spoke to the principal in the presence of the parents and said, if you require to counsel anybody, or if you require to punish, if anybody needs to be get arrested, these parents. Do not punish the boy for no fault of his. And that saved the boy from restitution. But the question I asked everyone, did the boy realize? Yes, he realized. Immediately, the counselors came forth, explained to the boy, is had a good counseling session with the parents and the matter was like, but it doesn't happen everywhere. Kya ho rai garib ghar mein, ya low middle class mein. The children are beaten up if they are not able to bring good records. The children are beaten up because if they are playing, then they should study. Children are beaten up if they are not listening to the parents, but they are failing to understand the parents that now this is a stage where the children are stepping from lower adolescence to middle adolescence. There's a gradient effect. Decency ho gaya hai, denial ho gaya hai, ab deviant, they are deviating. Ye nahi samaj pa rahe hai ki darwaze ke bahar danger khada hai. Deviancy, delinquency khadi hai. They are feeling that here again we can meet the child and put him in order. They fail to understand, friends, that adolescent age is a very precarious age when not only if child is growing physically, mentally, but he's growing emotionally, he is able to understand himself well, and he's having his own expectations from his parents. He's conscious about his rights, and he wants them to be expressed. Now, what happened to this I'll narrate another case to you. 
And this case is very well known. The other day also I have shared this case on some photo. Now this boy, you know, and whatever I'm sharing with you is part of my research finding and part of this paper of the way also. The age gradient has a definite impact on the behavior disorder of children. Now what happened was this another case where the mother, parents, you know, often they compare children. They compare the elder one with the second one or the second one with the elder one. And that creates a chaos. That creates a confused feeling in the child as to who I am. Am I doing the right thing? And this sibling rivalry also enforces a behavior disorder. The child will either run away or he will fall into the company of peer group because peer group outside the house is standing definitely to give companion, to give identity, to give proximity, to give a feeling of belongingness. Here we are. But who is that peer group? What type of impact is there? Later realized. Now this case, I tell you, and it is a case, a very well-known case of Haryana, where this boy was studying in a public school, well-to-do school. He was a class 11 or 12, uh, class 11, 12 boy. Definitely of the age of 17, 18, he has gone that upper mid adolescent age. And I think you will be able to recall this case when I tell you that this boy, he planned to delay the examination because he was not prepared. And simply by his not, not preparing doesn't mean the examination of CBSC will get delayed or postponed. So what did he plan? He knew his parents were always after him because he was not able to bring good record. But parents did not realize that this boy had also certain positive qualities. They never realized. They always compared him with the, the younger one. And they always said, and you know, this is known as labeling. You're labeling the child. You're fit for nothing. You do not listen to me. You are an utter burden for me. These are the things that go on. And in a normal course of life, the child starts thinking about himself in this manner. The self-concept starts changing unless and until a person has a healthy self-concept. He cannot work successfully, even in later life. Even in later life, you will find many a people, they are becoming alcoholic, they are becoming drug addicts, they are committing suicide, they are committing any crime. Because who am I? It's disturbed. This is a self-concept, is a very strong pillar of our personality. Now, in this case, what happened? That the child loved to play on piano. He wanted to become a musician. He didn't want to become a, a scholar or a very studious philosopher. But you know, in any of family, except for the lower class, uh, the poor stricken labor class, every family wants their parents, children to be educated, no doubt. Even a poor man will say, Bacha mera le, to Everyone wants. But a child didn't want to study in the class. He wanted to play on piano. Bobby take education, eh? But parents didn't realize because he used to leave his class and go there. And as for, you know, friends, excuse me if I say that in the schools, how far the teachers able to to understand the psyche of the students, God only knows. Because whatever training they are going through, BA, MA, and everything, the moment they come and put in the garb of a teacher, they come to teach. They do forget that while teaching, they have to also play the role of an elderly sister, of a mother, of a beloved, and show all love to the child. Even today, you know, many students love their teachers because teachers have showered their love on them. They love the teachers more than their parents. Guru, Purnima, we say, Guru ke puja karte. Wo kaun guru hai? Wo wo guru hai jino ne bachyo ke personality development mein role play kiya hai. Not the parents. 
Now, here what happened, parent, the teachers started accusing the child, abusing the child in the class, throwing the child out of the class instead of understanding where he goes. Kyo class ke wo kaha ja hai? No one realized. Then they called the parents. And the parents took the child home. He was plus 17. Gave him a good beating. Closed him up. And later, again, he came to school. So he planned all the way to hurt somebody. In San ke andar, jab aggression a jata hai, frustration a jata hai, tab wo frustrated ho ke crime karta hai. Frustration has a very close relationship with crime in early age. So the child got aggressed and he planned to kill somebody without knowing that he's going to that crime. And he killed a small boy of the same school. The boy's age was the same of his younger brother. The blame was shifted first to the driver, then to the gardener. All camouflaging was done. Later it came out that this was the boy. And when he was arrested, I don't know whether he has been left out because he was in cold-blooded murder. And the court had said that enough because the JJ Act says that he can be put under three years if conviction has taken place and get rehabilitated. But then there came a new dictum that punishment can be given, hanging can be done, which has been stopped, and long-term imprisonment. But for what reason? What was the reason? Simply because he was not allowed to play piano. I got a chance, you know, of talking to the prosecutor of this boy. I was giving a lecture in CBI. And the prosecutor said, ma'am, the parents never wanted the boy to play piano. The teachers never saw to it that the boy played piano. And the boy lost all his career putting up in the correctional home just because of no confidence. Friends, it's so painful. But in our correctional homes, where will the piano come from? Therapeutic games, vocational trades are very low in some places. So he lost his career. For no reason of this. For the fault of parents. For the fault of their teachers. For the fault of the whole gamut of people not understanding his son. Now, this girl is out of the way. Do you think he will be normal? Why did he is put in again in the piano? Again, he is given a board of therapeutic treatment. Again, he is given a long-term counseling. He will come back to his normal self, but with much difficulty. So he is a child. His psyche is disturbed. His ego is disturbed. His self-concept is disturbed. When he, even when he grows in life and starts a normal life and gets married, his subconscious mind, his unconscious thoughts will always remain disturbed. And he can never spend out love to others. At the speck of the moment, he will get provocative. He will try to injure. He will try to be aggressive. These things follow. So from there, I come forward to the next one. And that is the final stage. That is delinquency. That is when the juveniles run away. Run away from home. Fall into the group peer group pressure and commit crime. Now, so far, I was explaining to you that I think I will identify psychological liar. Pele, let me complete Dr. Ranjit Singh. Will it do? Yeah. Uh, you want me to uh, explain psychological liar? Or do you want me to continue Dr. Ranjit Singh? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, you can continue. And uh, yeah. there is a message from Dr. Ranjita in the chat. Uh -huh. uh, so she was like, ma'am, how we identify pathological liars? So that's I, I talk to that afterwards. Let me yes, finish this. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah. So now when we come to this next part, that is delinquency. Now delinquency, the word is no longer used in the Juvenile Justice Act. It says children in conflict with law. 
children in conflict with law. Now, let me go into that, you know, whole uh, dynamic of that thing. I will share with you a few things. That when I used to sit down and do counseling, I loved to, you know, I used to feel that my own child is sitting in the observation home and waiting for me. I used to rush out in the morning, going from all the way from Indirapuram, Ghaziabad to Kinjave camp that is in Delhi. Children, all those children, majority, not all I'll say, but majority, were from poor homes, not from broken homes, from poor homes. Economically poor homes, educationally illiterate homes. And those children, they, were, they had run away, they, had, they were dropouts, they had alcoholic fathers who used to beat them. They, they mothers used to go out at domestic help. Even the girls were sexually abused by their parents, so they used to run away and falling into either they used to get trafficked. They were made to beg. And many a times it so happened that these children fell into the company of older boys, older people who got into organized crime and made these people part of that gang and made them commit crime, giving them small allurements of uh, you know, uh, money, shelter. And parents, when they got arrested, those very parents used to come to meet them. I had used to talk. I started counseling of the parents. Instead of counseling the boys, I used to counsel the parents. And the parents used to say that these children are out of our controls. So it's better that they stay here. I said, by staying here, they are getting more into the learning of crime because they are in the company of peer group. Why don't you take them home? There comes the point. Why did they go out of your control? Because you never gave them time to understand them. Whether we are rich or poor, love is the biggest meter of understanding, which they have failed to give. They all, the, as the child grew old, the child started moving out in the company of peer group. Parents go out to work, whether they are rich or poor. The proximity is not there. In the rich case, the the parents are educated, they give them all the children born, but they cannot give them love and proximity. In the case of poor, they cannot give them proximity, they cannot give them love, and they cannot give what the children want. So they go out and try to steal petty robberies, petty crimes, offenses, theft. These children do, they get arrested, come to the correction home. And to my dismay, let me tell you, as to find the parents coming with fruits and, you know, apples and sweets to the children and say, Beta tum hai raho, ya tik and I used to feel like slapping the parents. Why? Why are you disowning your parents, children? Because they are failed parents. But iske alawa, main ye bhi bolungi, it's not all poor. There were many well-to-do home children who had run away, committed crime. And the parents used to come to me and say, stop counseling, we'll take them home. They never believed in correction. They never believed in reforming their children. They only believed about their own name and fame and about the stigma that will get attached. So that's why you will find in correctional homes, the ratio of poor to rich is five to one. It is the history of our country. It will go on and go on and go on. But what has happened that delinquency or the children in conflict with law, we generally catch the poor, we generally catch those children who are homeless, we generally catch children who are on the street, but we forget to catch children who are from the upper class, who are running away, going into alcohol, taking drugs, moving into crimes, very high five crimes. Now you come into cyber crimes. Why talk anything beyond cyber crimes? As I told you, intelligence grows. And some people corrected me and said, not only rich men's son, even the poor men's son, you know, with a small mobile, cheap mobile, they are going into cyber crimes. So children have given root to these cyber crimes. And we are being taught how to evade cyber crime. We are being taught how to prevent cyber crimes. Police is tearing their hair to find out hackers and crackers to stop the cyber crime. 
and there are a lot of research is going on about cyber crime, how to profile the cyber criminals, and how to stop the cyber. But the root cause is where are we to start? We are giving to this country children with severe behavior disorder. I go on mentioning it punctually, particularly in this pandemic year. I was going through a survey which is very painful. I can share it with this portal afterwards. Very painful, where it is seen that girls were sent out for prostitution or for any labor. Children in Rajasthan, in Bhuvaneshwar, in Bulanshar, they are given in early marriages so that there will be one less mouth to feed. Boys, when the schools had stopped, they were not able to go to school. There is no midday meal. So they were made to work as laborers everywhere to bring back money home. Are we pursuing the right of the child? Is there any policy for these children in this pandemic year? So many children, so many children, friends, the record is not there. But it is very much in the knowledge of NCRB, KIA, government, KIA, Jahan, the children are getting trafficked, children are getting kidnapped, children are going into crimes, children are running away because of loss of source of income of the parents, survival, protection, food, security, and so they are away. Yes, so finally, you know, I started the rights of the child. I go back to it. That the right of the child is not being nurtured properly. Even I will say, I'll point out my finger and say that if anybody from upper class said, here I am, I am pursuing the right of the child. You're not, sir. Because giving simply food, giving simply uh, money, giving simply very nice clothes, or putting the child in a hostel, is not nurturing the right of the child. The child simply wants security, warmth, love, affection, sense of belongingness, which we fail to get. So, therefore, I may will come back, you know, because there was there's a very good article people must read. The pandemic forgotten and forsaken children. In this pandemic year, millions and millions of our children. I'm not going to West. West they are, have their own devices. The state policies are there. They take care of the children. But in India, in this pandemic year, NGOs themselves have mentioned they are unable to, because of the lockdown, they are unable to check down the children who are running away from home because of the abuses, the beatings of the parents. Because there are parents who, after the loss of jobs, feel so insecure and aggressive that you have to you have to because they are most vulnerable to any beating, any abuses, the children were vulnerable. And therefore, the best part of their thing is they run away. And when they run away, there are so many missing children today in India that there's no track of it. And these children, what do we expect from them? Even if they come back, they will again run away. They will find that crime is the best thing they can do. And I have been in touch habitual criminals, with history cheaters, with adult criminals. Those adult criminals who had been first offenders, or casual offenders, done provocation under crime, they have no previous records. But those people who are recidivists, last time in this very conference, the conference Dr. Ranjit Singh knows, we were talking of, uh, you know, recidivism. And uh, there was senior police officer, Dr. Uh, I'm forgetting his name, who was talking about recidivism. These recidivists always had a past history of repeated crimes. To the extent they have no remorse, because the self-concept says, who am I? I'm no one. Nobody loves me. Nobody had loved me. So let me do whatever. Further, you know, I think uh, I would like to say one thing more. When we, those factors, you know, why I'm impinging on parental? Because parents are the root cause of it. 
but then you know comes the environment around sometimes what happens parents may not you know be playing a direct role there are some other person maybe the uncle maybe the aunt maybe the grandmother or father who you know with their love or with their over protective behavior or with their other words you know try to create some problems in the child so that is the family problem but then there are environmental problems also the school problem is there and then the peer group the study which i had done and i'm about to publish my book very shortly where i had studied you know children talking about peer group many a children have said that we have come into this crime because our friends have said let's go and do something adventurous let's do something where we get some money let's do something where we will enjoy and we'll be together let's do something so that we get some food to eat and they had gone and done it so peer group pressure in the vicinity is there not only that i have observed peer group pressure in the observation home a click is done a diet is drawn and children break jail kehte tum bahar jao hum bhi aa rahe hain i word them hum bhi jaldi aa rahe hain and when they go out they come back again a cloud is formed inside so peer group influence also is very detrimental detrimental in the case of children who are moving in conflict and war so my friends in the end of the thing let me tell you that there is a gradient effect any study whether it is divya's or you know the book that is mine coming out that as the children move from 1 to 8 from 8 to 14 and 14 onwards emotionally they are getting strong emotional intelligence is very good this part of psychology they are emotionally intelligent they know what is their right they know their self interest they know i am okay you are not okay therapy goes on and at the same time they start evaluating themselves with others how others look towards them subjective well being that also our records show our records our data show that the subjective building is very high i was surprised the other day when i was standing and trying to draw the line candle line bar graph i found that emotional intelligence subjective well being are both high in the case of children who move to 17 to 18 but at the same time the criminal propensity the scale that i've applied or you say anti social behavior is equally high whereas it was less in the case of 14 uska reason kya hai uska reason hai if you interpret it wo isliye hai ki bacche ke jab apne self identity badh raha hai he is increasing the emotional intelligence is increasing wo ye soch raha hai ki hum jab acche hain to log mujhe acche kyun nahi keh rahe hame daatte kyun hain kyun nahi samajhte hain ki hum bade ho gaye hain kyun nahi samajhte hain ki mera apna space hai we talk of the word space the modern era it's no longer the past where the parents say baith jao bade bacche bhi baith jate hain yahan tak ki bachcho ke maa baap bhi jo hai agar buzurg kehta hai baith jao to wahi baithe rehte hain aaj wo zamana lad gaya hai now the child will say kyun baithe so what happens is that i found that while emotion intelligence is going high their subjective well being that i am here i can do this job but then when i'm not getting opportunity when i'm getting abused when i'm getting thrown out the criminal propensity is also going high the anti social behavior is also going high so there should be opportunities you know there is a good saying that motivation leads to frustration why when there is a person highly motivated and he is given the opportunity to achieve a goal and he achieves the goal he becomes more motivated but when he has the motivation not given the opportunity there is a blockage he moves into frustration and even if there is opportunity he fails he will not go into frustration provided he gets proper counseling and support and so this age the gradient effect the emotional tide the personality formation the self concept the feeling of oneness these all go together in the personality growth of the child and once we stop there should be an intervention there should be an intervention you know i feel pain i feel pain at this fag end of my life when i have worked and worked immensely 
that even today, our correctional homes are not meeting the ends of really intervening and, you know, trying to pull out the wrong spot from the child's mind and putting in the right so that the child reforms himself. Because of our negligence, because of our wrong policies, because of lack of intervention programs in the correctional homes. So with these words, I wanted to share with you that these things, you know, when we talk of parents, you know, I will request in the end of the day, my, to my, the parents who are listening to me, that please have a moderate, a democratic, not a diplomatic attitude towards it. Democratic attitude kehta hai, I'm okay, you're okay. But we generally have parents who are themselves frustrated and transfer frustration to their children. They are frustrated parents. They are parents who are authoritative parents who do not want the child to express himself. That I told you of that Haryana case. Then there are one group of parents who are absolutely indifferent. They are indifferent parents and they do not care what the child feels or the child needs or the child's desire to move in the goal. They think and then when the child does something good, did you help the child to become a Navy officer? Or the child has gone on his way properly. He has got a very good role model. We require role models. We require mentors. How many children are fortunate to have right role model, right mentors? It can be a sister. It can be a brother. It can be the teacher. It can be any good Samaritan who can become a right role model. And the child will grow. This is a tree. Like the land we plant, we give it water, we give it manure, we give it water, 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 we give it we should have a democratic and you'll find money is not needed. You need not give money to the child and say, go, jao, ja ke ja party karo. You just sit with the child and say, here we are and let's look. I'll again narrate a case before I end here and I'll take in your questions. Otherwise, I'll go on talking. This is a case, you know, I was in the ice team as some people mentioned. I was handling a stress management piece. I was an undersecretary. I will not name anybody. He was looking remorse, quiet, with his head down. And you know, I always study body languages when I used to take classes. So when the class went for a break, I called him and I said, you are having a problem? stress management I'm in stress. I said, you sit in the class and discuss your stress. And probably many people may be having like you, will share. If you are willing, but consent has to be taken. He said, yes. You know, what was his stress? His stress was that he had a three years old son. And it was winter. The son never used to put on warm clothes. See, such, such a minor thing. And he used to beat the child, make it way. The child used to cry, so used to disturb him. <coughs> One day he didn't do anything. He just came away. So he said, what am I to do? I said, you do one thing. The child has got conditioned hearing your voice. You don't say anything. Leave the clothes close to him and move away from the house. Leaving the clothes and moving away will mean that you want him to put on, but at the same time, you don't want to talk to him. You're annoyed with his behavior. He did it on the first day and he waited outside. He said, I'm surprised. This went on for two, three days. He came to me on the third day and said, ma'am, I'm surprised. The child has put the clothes up and down. Came to the father and said, he started crying, asking for help to help him put on the clothes. A small child. You, without explaining, you're insisting. He said, you know, I said, these are all your conceptions. 
child doesn't understand that. That was one case. Another case I want to share with you. Another gentleman, it was going, CBSC exams were going on. And at that time, cricket was being played in Sardar. In those days, you know, I esteem, I'm talking of, uh, you know, 1970, uh, no, no, uh, it was uh, huh, somewhere, you know, 1995, 95, 96, somewhere there. Sarja, you know, cricket used to take occasionally when the, uh, the CBS exam used to take place. So he was very much distressed. He said that the boy is going on playing cricket, uh, looking cricket, he's not preparing for the exam. So when I close the TV, he starts snouting. I had no idea what to do because I was not in that position. So I said, let me play a game. We psychologists do play games, you know. So I said, why don't you sit down and enjoy the cricket once? Because I'll, you don't come to my class, come late. So he sat down, the child was again, and the moment the father went and sat down, the child closed the TV. He said, no, 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 don't close the TV. India versus Pakistan. The child was bewildered. Later, the child closed the TV after the game was over. He went to his studies. In the evening, he said, Papa, I see cricket, no doubt, but I also do my studies. So, you know, in both sides, the stress got dissolved. This is a matter of reasoning, rationality. We are all human beings. And we must all understand, friends, that we are all having the personality traits, let's say extroversion, neuroticism, psychoticism. These are all qualities, introversion. And as long as we are moving in that emotional balance bracket, we are moving up and down and resolving ourselves. So I think I have completed. Now there are questions. I think questions can be asked. Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, I must say it was really, really amazing. And I really enjoyed every single word from your side. We learned a lot from your experience and from your immense knowledge regarding the growth of a children, considering all the beneficial points in it. So uh, with thank this, you. thank you, ma'am. With this, I want to uh, put forward some of the questions in the chat. Also, I would like to mention, ma'am, that there is a lot of appreciation in the chat that they enjoyed your session a lot. There is a question. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There is a question from Dr. Ranjita, ma'am. Ma'am mm -hmm. would like to ask how we identify pathological liar for forensic point of view. Mm -hmm. I would like to share here, you know, I had stopped. Why? I stopped, you know, because this there is a scale which I have formulated where we go into the life score. Now, you know, this is known as social desirability point. The thing is this, that when a child is faking, for instance, he is an incorrigible liar. Liar in the sense that he's saying, nahi, mene to nahi kiya. no, no. I do listen to my parents. This is known as a part of social desirability. He wants to gain a good name, a good image, a satisfaction, a positive evaluation from his parents, from the society, knowing fully well that he has not done it. So this is known as faking. You know, and this faking life through, if you go into Ising's theory, questionnaire from where I formulated the CPQ, I noticed that those who fake a lot, like I have never stolen anybody's things. I have never told lie. Very common objective. I always wash my hands before I take my lunch. These things always said yes, yes, is a score going up. And this faking generally, you know, has to be brought down if you want to reform the child. You have to point to the child that you are to accept your shortcomings. Only then the child will correct himself. But you know what happens? As long he's faking, now this faking doesn't start immediately. It starts from childhood. He has not gone to school. He has come back, told his parents, school to get it. He has not done his homework. He told his parents, homework to get it. There are many a times parents go to the school 
accuse the teachers in front of the students saying that you people you people don't take care of our uh, children you don't see to the homework of the children you show partiality towards our children and the teacher has no word so you know therefore this again is part of conditioning the child realizes that if i go on telling lies that lies has to be taken into point and if i go on telling lies and nobody is correcting me i will do it becomes part of personality itna personality ka part ban jata hai ki utte baithte wo jhoot bolne lagta hai without realizing that he is telling lies usko wo jhoot sach dikhai deta hai this becomes part of personality trait now in my cpq scale the moment one person starts scoring high and along with it his neuroticism or psychoticism going high we immediately say he has committed crime he requires a proper reprimand patient he requires a proper correction he requires a proper intervention because he has no regret for what he has done no regret karega hi nahi wo kahega humne to kiya nahi tha humne to kiya hi nahi tha aapko ek case bata rahe hain aapne sorry ma'am your dr ranjana is dr ranjana there uh, ma'am her name is dr ranjita dr ranjita i am just answering this question to you you know vikas dubey's case vikas dubey was a repeater and a recidivist every time he was coming in and coming out of the jail and finally he was you know he he was a uh, what will i say by the police he died in police custody i will take it like that he died in an encounter right but you go into his background he came from a simple farmer's family who felt that you know power is everything and you know the ch- the boy started realizing that he can be very charismatic he can tell lies he can you know influence people and he can go on do- getting his means to the extent that often and on he was bailed out by politicians he was used as the stewards and he went on committing crime ye bhi ek record hai jo aap logo ko samajh am i right now have you got my message use the application of test you know in forensic science if you talk about forensic science faking that is in my words getting lies is being used tested by polygraph is being tested by brain mapping is being tested by voice analyzer is being tested by narcotic drugs but how many techniques are being applicable in the court that you have to see polygraph or lie detector is being applied but other things like brain mapping voice analyzer or narcotic drug analysis these are not taken unless the consent of the person is taken and even now it is in our country in other country it is there in our country it is not acceptable in the court of law okay Uh, yes thank you so much ma'am thank you so much for your answer uh so i request all the participants if you have any question with our respected ma'am uh, you can unmute yourself and ask your question directly to ma'am as well so anyone can raise your hand i will allow you to ask your question uh, yes sir uh, i think uh, Professor Natraja, sir, you wanted to ask something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm asking you something. Yes, sir. I think I know Professor Natraja. Yeah. Hello. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm How are fun. you? I'm excellent. I'm very fine. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah. nice to hear you. Uh, just I'm just want to share with you, Dr. Sir. It is it is a very simple one. It yeah. is going on every day in our day to day life. But normally the business people, you know, sometimes what they do is, suppose for example, they are just selling something like that. So at that time, some of the business people, uh, their son, uh, they come to the shop and they sitting with their father and watching what he doing something like that. This is my personal experience. Yeah. When I was when I was studying the college, the evening I must go to my uh, my father shop. I must sit and watch and uh, help him. Right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So if it is so, uh, sometime my father told that, for example, uh, he told the prices ten rupees, for example. Uh-huh. For some other person, he said it is fifteen rupees. The same. Uh, 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 the material right mm-hmm. so i am watching this one why he is telling like 
He hmm. told that 12 rupees, now others 15 rupees. What is there? Uh, something like that. I used to think like this one. Hmm. They say hey, all over the world, the business people, they are doing this one. Hmm. So if it is so, uh, is it an acceptable lie or how you are being based on your experience? No, but then Dr. Natarajan, you're saying that uh, you saw your father say doing like this? No, just for the example, I am telling an example. Because nowadays in many businesses, their son, they are go to the uh, supporting their father, they are in their shop or something like that, right? Uh, all no, over the world. Uh, no, so no. if it is so, it is an allowed uh, lie or... It's, no, uh, it is all, yes, yes. It's all, you know, Dr. Natarajan, let me share with you one thing. That it all depends how one perceives it, Dr. Natarajan. I see. Okay. Now, the point is this, if there is a discrepancy, if for one it is 10 rupees, for one it is 12 rupees, for the person is evaluating the person who is buying the customer. How weak, how strong the customer is. How close or how, you know, uh, regular the customer is. We also go through this, mill, you know, for a little thing, supposing a vendor, yeah. from whom I'm continuously taking something, Dr. Mukhrajan. Uh, yeah. He would say, today only, I'll cite an example to you. He says in Hindi, I said, lesson bolo. He said, 40 rupees ka hai, KG Mata ji, main aapko 30 rupees ka dunga. I know he's a hoax. I knew it was a hoax, but I enjoyed his talking. Then I tried the second one. I said, what about, you know, in, a, in a, this place we call uh, beans, for example. Beans kite ka hai? So I told my husband, give him what he wants. He is just playing game. Now, you know what? This is a, known as seeking, you know, some sort of satisfaction that I'm appeasing, that matter of appeasement. Okay. <coughs> but you know what? Dr. Natarajan, the person who is observing, and if he's a small child, let me tell you, he starts learning from his father's business, this is how the business should go. You take more money from one who can afford. You take less money from one who cannot afford. Yes. But do it like this so that you maintain all the customers in your place. Let them not go away. A person who cannot afford to give 15 rupees at uh, 30 rupees, but 12 rupees, he's there. A person who is giving 50 rupees is also there. So you're maintaining all the customers. But then, Dr. Natarajan, I'm very sensitive. I remember in ISTM when I was getting interviewed to join as a deputy director in Delhi, I was asked a very you know, out-of-the-box question. And I always think out-of-box, you know me, Dr. Natarajan. It was asked, what do you understand by the word moral value, you know, as a psychologist? So I thought for a while, should I go into the dictionary of moral value or should I think something outside? So, you know, very quickly, and there were four people looking at me. I said, you know, today, even today, I remember, I said, moral value is what a child learns from his parents. It transcends from the parents to the child. Whatever they practice, the child sees and how they convey to the child, that becomes the moral value. I think you will agree with me and accept me. In that case, a businessman's son, simply a shopkeeper's son, will learn from the parent, father, that this is the way how to run the business. Right? For them, yeah. this is no crime. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Shubha. Thank you. Because sometimes what they do is, the earlier period, even, even the small children, uh, they are watching their father, mother, what they are talking, something like that. Then they, what they think is, okay, uh, telling lies. is, it is not a uh, uh, it is not a wrong thing to respond. So we can we can tell lie. So like that, uh, from there they they are deviated from their the uh, from their normal uh, uh, life. Then they mm. yeah, just deviate to some other activities, not only in the business, some other yeah. activity. Okay, whatever we are telling the lie, nothing wrong. Yeah. Something mm. like that. Once it is impressed in the childhood, it is mm. very difficult to be delete from their mind. They say it is exactly. correct. Uh, exactly. Like exactly. Uh, and yeah. not only that, you know, the thing is this right in the beginning, I said the do's and don'ts, Dr. Natarajan. Correct, correct, Children, correct. when they are learning in the formative stage, yes. parents, you know, they are the role models. If a father goes on constantly telling lies in the presence of the child and says, tell the child, person outside that I'm not at home, what will the child draw the image of the father? 
Now that is a lie and the father is asking the child to tell the lie. Now supposing the child next day tells a lie, the father beats him up. So is that not a confusion between do's and don'ts? This yeah. is happening in our country today. Today we call ourselves modern families. And that is why we are having so many children, Dr. Nagarajan, who are yeah. running away, who are defined, who are delinquent, Sorry. who are becoming suffering from, you know, yeah. they are taking to drugs. Yes, yes. So much. In this pandemic time, when children are not able to move out of the house, they are, you know, feeling suffocated, they are running away, they're taken to drugs. And right. the parents come to me and say, you know, the uh, government is not able to decide about the education, they are under stress, they're taken to drugs. stress taking to drugs. What are you doing there? You are also in the lockdown yeah. in the house. Why are you not sitting with them and giving them chance to play other activities? Thank you very much, Dr. Natarajan. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, there is uh, one more question in the chat by Yasin MG. Uh, ma'am, he's asking how to approach recidivism in delinquency. Uh, in a bracket, he also mentioned juvenile aftercare. No, I'm not getting the question. How to... Uh, uh, Yasin, can you unmute and uh, ask a question directly? Yeah. Good evening, ma'am. Yeah, good evening. Ma'am, I just wanted to ask how to approach the recidivism. I mean, uh, juveniles who commit crime even after rehabilitation, they do indulge uh, the crime again and again. How do we approach that type of uh, rehabilitation yeah. method? Yeah. yeah, I tell you that I have come across such cases. And uh, again, let me tell you, the sorry part is, that these children, you know, you are talking of the word recidivism. Often, you do not go inside the story of recidivism. Many times, you will find that the children want to resettle in the house. But what happens is the other social factors, like parents are not willing to take them. The peer group is still hounding them. There is something going on. As a result, the child goes back to the crime. Or he finds the observation home or the correction home more safe than this. And there's another fact. The police people in the vicinity, if they find the child moving anywhere outside the house or standing somewhere, even standing, he's been taken, supposing some theft, some robbery has gone nearby or some fight is going on, scuffle. And this boy is standing nearby because he's on the record, he's been caught and brought. I have questioned the police people because he was standing there. So no, there are multivarious factors. I do not accept the fact that a child repeats crime on his own. He is being propelled to go into it by other contributing factors. Yes, in the case of adults, my book is there, Reformation and Rehabilitation of Adult Prisoners. I've studied 16 states personally. I've traveled in this Johala Nehru Award way. Recidivism there, we call them habituals. They pre-plan murders, they occur. They are psychotics. But in the case of children, nay. In the case of children, a proper intervention program is their friends. If there is a probation system, where is probation? Juvenile Justice Act speaks explicitly on probation. Kyoni probation officer usko oversee karta hai ki wo kaha ja raha hai, kya kar raha hai? Is he doing his rightful studies? Is he engaged in a proper work? then, you know, this thing will not arise. My book is coming up, you know, I think probably end of August, I'm trying because I am, it's not by any foreign publisher, it's by an Indian publisher, but I'm trying my best on the research studies that I've done, the findings that have come. I've developed a rehabilitation model there to show that if timely intervention there and probation system had been activated, children will not go into crime. Parents often throw the children away. Bahar jau, bahar jau. Where will the child go? Wo crime karega, fir Are you getting my message? Yes. So, you know, if you say how to ta tackle this, it has to be tackled by multifarious efforts. It has to be tackled by proper intervention programs. It has to be tackled by probation system. Many times it so happened, uh, that a child has been left in Bihar. He was he had migrated to Delhi and committed crime. And afterwards, he returns to Delhi. 
because the probation in network of probation system is not there. Nobody knows where he's going. The people who have left him, the welfare officer and the police, they have left him in some relatives' house and they threw him out. Essay cases there. If you go inside and you study, you will find things are very painful. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Yasin, for your question. Uh, ma'am, uh, as for going with the chat, I think there is no more question in the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, now I request my co-host, uh, Mani, because she wanted to give a thanks to you for this wonderful talk, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. You are so amazing. I'm so thankful for everything you bring noticeable for all of us. And being a mother of six years, I actually learned a lot from you. What Thank all points I have to take care of. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much i think you know i sorry for interruption i think thank dr ranjit singh should organize the program yeah. for newly parents so that i can talk about nurturing the child and how to help the child to develop a positive idea. and healthy personality <laughs> that's a wonderful idea we will we surely will. keep in keep in our record ma'am <laughs> and uh, we are extremely uh, sorry for sir uh, for ranjit sir side as he is very much engaged with one investigation so couldn't mm. make it possible to be here but i'll surely send this message to sir that uh, and after your words we are extremely happy and will surely looking forward for more interesting sessions from your end ma'am thank you very much thank you that you have liked it and i enjoyed also because often I forget where I am. I become so emotional with my ideas and talks. And I'm very happy to see you all. And particularly Dr. Natarajan is my very old friend. To have him on your portal also is very nice. Thank you all of you. Dr. Ranji Singh, to give, extend my thanks to him. And you, Asta, and uh, I'm not getting your name. What's your name? Please. Huh? It's Kratika. Ha, Kratika. And all your team. All your team. Thank for giving me chance to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, in this virtual era, we request you to accept this gratitude in the form of certificate of appreciation for thank your you. wonderful talk on a very needed and a need of an art topic that is deviancy in children. Thank you so much, ma'am. And all, thank you. And I request and I extend my gratitude on the behalf of the entire participants in the session for your wonderful talk and your amazing skills on the topic deviancy in children. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you once again. Thank you very much.